someone please think of the children? Hey everybody, Forrest here, and we're back with part two of our cheap versus expensive mini paint face-off. In this episode, much like the last, Rachel will be painting another one of the Avacyn Inquisitors from Arena of the Planeswalkers. However, this time she'll be using some purpose-made mini paints, specifically the Vallejo Game Colors set. If you haven't seen the first episode, I highly suggest you go check it out. Rachel paints another one of the models from the same squad in cheap off-the-shelf craft acrylics that you can get at pretty much any big box store for like 50 cents. The question we're looking to answer, is the more expensive purpose-built mini paint worth it? Also, for our longtime viewers, a quick note. You may notice this episode looks a little bit different than some of our other ones. That is because we actually filmed this as a live stream, which is a bit of a new thing for us we're looking into. So it being our first live stream, please have some patience with us as we're still working out some kinks and getting things to go smoothly. I did edit out some of the longer stretches from the original live recording to make this video a little more streamlined. Now that being said, there is a ton of great information from Rachel in this video. I actually learned a fair amount just in conversation with her as we were streaming. And just to reiterate, Rachel is not a professional mini painter, but she is a professional artist who mainly works in oils and watercolors. So if you're interested in checking out her art, hit her up at recartworks.com or follow her on Instagram at recartworks. Finally, one more thing. We haven't put any music as a backing track on this video, mainly for two reasons. One, YouTube copyright strikes, and two, we'd rather not force our what we believe is excellent, but you may disagree, taste in music upon you. I highly recommend you throw some music on in the background and sit back and enjoy. All right, thanks for letting me plug my girl's art, and now let's hop into the painting and see if your money is well spent on the more expensive mini paints. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, we'd really appreciate you liking and subscribing to our channel. Hey guys, Rachel with Two Bats here. So as promised, we are doing the follow-up to the mini painting video from last week. Uh, we decided to try it as a live stream this time, so please forgive me if I stumble through this a little bit. Um, and tell us what you think. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Forrest is manning the computer over there, so he'll be able to tell me if there's any questions that come up. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do another one of the Avacyn Inquisitors, and we're trying out the Vallejos. We got them in. They're very pretty. So let's see what happens. Um... And kind of try and stick with the same color scheme I did on the other one so we get a good one to one comparison. Hopefully, this white will be better. If you watched the last one, we had foamy white, which is never a desirable trait. Alright, so brush choice is always a good, good place to start because. I often watch a lot of people choose the wrong ones when they're not sure what to do. They'll So I'm going to go with a tiny little flat one to do some of the bigger areas of the white. I've probably said this before, but I definitely feel like it bears repeating. All right, so let's see. So far, the consistency is a lot better. A lot, a lot. It's got way better coverage than the crappy craft barrel white. Probably still gonna do, need to do a coat or two, but that's okay. See, that's going on way better than last time. Looks way less foamy. Did you have to thin it at all with water? No, this one's straight out of the bottle at the moment. Yeah, I've noticed the Vallejos seem to be a much better, I guess, viscosity is a good word. Than the yeah. Ones. yeah, yeah, they're a lot thinner. There's there's different types of acrylic paints because um, how paint work is works is the pigment is suspended in a base. 
And with different paints, it's a different thing. Like with oils, it's a kind of oil. It's linseed oil, walnut oil, something like that. With acrylics, it's acrylic polymer emulsion, which is just like, which is clear and kind of milky when it's wet, but dries clear. So that's why sometimes when you paint it on, it looks darker when it dries than it did when you first painted it. You mean the acrylics? Yeah. So sometimes that's frustrating or annoying, but as long as you learn to expect it, it's okay. Um, as far as the ac difference between acrylics goes, the, the main difference that you run into is um, the amount of pigment suspended in that base. The cheap acrylics are really crappy. They've got the base, but then there's just a tiny bit of pigment. So when you thin it out, the pigment gets thinned out a lot too. And it won't cover the whatever you're painting as well. Whether that be canvas or a mini or a rock. But if when you get into the more expensive acrylics, like the Liquitex or something else that's made for fine art, they have a much higher pigment quantity, which is why you get better coverage and it looks better, but they can also be a great deal thicker. These are fluid acrylics, so they're made to be thin. To They're structured in a way that you can get a lot of better fine detail, hence the part for minis. The other thing with paint is Different pigments are going to have different opacities. So if you've got like a lead white, it's going to be really thick and very, very opaque. You won't be able to see anything through it. Things like alizarin crimson is going to be a lot more translucent. So you're going to see the color underneath it a lot more than any of the other colors. So you want to kind of bear in mind what is underneath it. We had primed these with a gray so that it makes a nice mid-tone. Going with a mid-tone makes it a lot easier to build up into whites and get your good highlights, but it also is really easy to go down into the shadows. You may still need to do several coats, but trust me, it's going to be a lot easier than if you did it a bright white and had to go all the way down to dark. Or if you do it black and have to try and build up the whites, because then it's going to get really, really thick. With everything, you want a good full range of value. You want super duper dark as well as some extremely bright highlights. Just makes it more dynamic. What is the specific Vallejo you're using right now? Oh, the one I'm using right now is dead white. And right now it does look really bright, but we'll probably dirty it up with some washes and some other things. With the 3D models, you, you do have the benefit of actual light being cast upon it and creating shadows and highlights, but you can enhance those, making it look a lot better. And see, I'm starting to do a second coat of the white. The first base coat, I kind of went in different directions with the brush, with the different strokes, to get into all of the little nooks and crannies. But when you're getting into the last coat, you want to be careful of which way the brush stroke is going. You want it to go with, with what you're painting. So with the fabric, I want it to go down like it's draping. So you're finding the Vallejo white to be a lot better than, what was the other one? Like Craft, Craft Barrel? Craft Barrel? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good God, yes. This is way better. Excellent. Way better. Oops. Get a little too much. Wipe some of that off. And periodically when you're doing the same color, you want to wipe your brush off and get some clean paint on. it. Acrylics tend to dry really fast and they can gunk up your brush and cause strange things to happen and make paint go where you don't want it on a mini. 
It's a delicate process. Look, see his little cravat? Oh, wait, try and make him in focus. But I got a little too much water still in my brush when I got into the paint and it does do the beading. So you want to be careful. Using the um, distilled water helps with keeping the water tension from making it like bubble up and beat up. But to be honest, uh, sometimes I don't have it on me and that's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. All right, while I'm doing the boring white part. So I've noticed there's been a bunch of videos asking different mini painters what what brushes they use and if they think the be the more expensive ones are better than the cheap ones or what. So better brushes can be a benefit, but it's not completely necessary and taking good care of your brushes is is going to be more important than anything else. I I'm a terrible, horrible person, and I have a bad tendency of not cleaning out my brushes, so I don't like buying the expensive ones, because I know I'm an asshole and I'm going to ruin them. So I try and keep good good enough care of my, my cheap to mid range brushes, and then I don't feel quite, but then I don't feel quite so bad when I left them in the bucket of water overnight and the tip is bent and I need to go buy some other ones. It's important to know yourself. All right, I think that's good enough on the white for a minute. Let's do some of the leather. So I used the like Van Dyke brown on the one we did before. So there he is. There. There is not a color exactly like that in the Vallejo game set. And I could mix one up, but let's try and see what they think leather brown is. That, that's their suggestion, so all right. I don't promise to agree though. I do actually, aside for a moment, I like these bottles a lot. They come with, they're like little eyedropper bottles, which means you can actually drip out like just a couple of drops. And for minis, that's, that's really all you need. Otherwise it'll dry out. And look, I did it with the white. I got a little too much, but it makes it a lot easier to control how much paint you are putting on your palette. Cause it's very easy to dump too much and then you waste it. And that's no good. Uh, let's do his gloves. That looks awfully yellow to me. Though I tend to like darker leathers. Sean Turpin says you could use a wet palette to extend the paint life. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. Using a wet palette does help because it keeps things from drying out so fast. It, those cheap acrylic bottles, they dump out so much, you'd have to paint an entire army in one sitting. And welcome to Warhammer 40k. <laughs> Which you could do! I'm not, no judgment there. That's just a time commitment. We've got a good buddy who is heavily invested into 40k at this point. I think he's got probably a 3,000 point army and a, another 2,000 point one or something like that. Yeah. It's been magnetizing all of them. So, oh, has he? Yeah, so you can change out the weapons and everything, but apparently he drilled through his finger today. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah. Actually, I haven't played 40K, yeah. but I do like the minis, and he's been letting me paint some of them, and it's been fun. Yeah, we've actually done <laughs> some of the 
objectives like the exterminatus device and a couple of other things we're probably going to be showing those off soon Hmm. I made a mistake. I thought that was his little shoulder pad. That's like part of his cape. So that's the beauty of this. Just get your brush a little wet, wipe some of it off, go back over it with white. Shot. All right, he's not looking too cool yet, but soon. Right, let's go ahead and get some red. Let's see, Vallejo's game colors is bloody red. Alright, let's make his cravat red. Ooh, that looks nice. That's a good color. And I actually think I might use the flat brush to do the detail on his cape. Because he's got his little inquisitor symbol. Alright, so going over the tops of these details it makes it really easy if you go ahead and dry your brush off as much as possible. You definitely don't want a ton of paint on there. So get some on, wipe it off. And the flat brushes make it easy to go over stuff like this because you can just kind of very lightly brush over the top of it. All right, this one's a little big, I am finding, because it's it's starting to want to put paint places I don't want it. So let's try going back to the other one. With the fine little details, you're probably going to have to go back in and do a little touch-up around it just to get the edges really crisp. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Get a smidge, the smidgiest smidge of water. If you feel your brush dragging along what you're painting, it's too dry and you need to get a, a tiny bit of water. And it's always easier to add more water than it is to take it away. Right. I probably wasn't painting that in a convenient way, so. There we go. Little Inquisitor symbols on, because, you know, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of white. <clears throat> Eventually, I'm going to figure out exactly how far I should hold this thing from that camera. Not yet. How would you say the Vallejos <laughs> compared to Oops. like high-end acrylics that you would normally use for fine art? Like Liquitex and stuff like that. <clears throat> oh, uh, that, okay. Um, so admittedly, I work mostly in oils and watercolor. Acrylic tends to dry a little faster than I like. But um, I have, I've used a decent amount of the Liquitex. 
it it is definitely a lot better than the cheap acrylic craft paints because it's got a higher concentration of pigment which always makes it look better but they do tend to be a lot thicker because a lot of times they're trying to emulate something with oils that you can paint in what's called impasto style where you can it's like really thick and and 3d and you can see the brush strokes really well and there's like a million different mediums you can mix in with it that make it look like sand or it'll make it do this cool like spider web thing it'll thicken it it'll thin it it'll do everything so it gives you a lot of options to play with which is really cool um but it tends to be more expensive obviously you can extend the life of it by using less and using mediums to thin it. Someone, oh, I cannot remember his name, left a comment on the last video mentioning that. And I thought it was a really good point, but it does, I had been thinking more along the lines of upfront cost for getting started or if you don't have that much to invest in, in the hobby because you're spending all of your money on minis. And, and they are not always cheap, depending on what you're playing. So, you know, it's, it's hard. Everything has its attributes and drawbacks. I would think the ease of use with just buying a pre-made set would be easier too, at least for beginners. Yeah, and and even I like I have to admit using the Vallejos is nice. They're thinned to a consistency made to do mini painting, yeah. so to get the tiny details, to get a good flow over it, and it is nice not having to spend a lot of time trying to find the consistency you want. Eventually you will get really good at it and it'll be like second nature, but it takes time and a lot of practice. Go over the leather again now that it's kind of dried off. The gray will show through a little bit. Whatever base coat you have is going to show through a little bit just by the nature of the paint. So doing a couple coats where you really want it is is definitely helpful so see that glove compared to that glove and see that one looks just a little more dingy let's go ahead and do a little more on the white The whites are always going to need the most coats. It's just the way it is. It's always better to do a slow buildup of multiple light coats than trying to go really thick and heavy first time because it just it just ends up making it look kind of goopy. And doing the multiple coats will give you a much, a much better, flatter finish. I don't know about you, but I think he needs a little more red. I think. Go for the little sleeve. One of the tricks of painting is you want, you're attempting to lead someone else's eye around what you have painted. You're trying to force them to look at it in a certain way and convey what you want out of it. And when you're doing a, a painting painting, you know, you're going to come up with your own subject matter and, and that's going to matter a lot as to what you're trying to say. With a painting, what you're trying to say is, look how cool this is. Um, and a lot of the details are already there for you and the real, the real trick to it is colors. Now, they all have their own their own sets. There's a color scheme that you're going with. But you can make them a little bit different, make them your own, and give them a little bit extra oomph by your color choice. So on the front, he has the one little bit of red. 
and then he's got one on the back. So doing things in threes in triangles is a good way to lead the eye around an object. So, you know, you can just do little accents here and there. Ooh, we could even give him little red buttons. All right, when you're doing teeny tiny things like the minis, it's important to kind of brace yourself. You can anchor the mini down and anchor your wrist down. That way you can be as stable as possible and get those teeny tiny little areas. All right. All right, let's go ahead and do his weapon, see how the metallics work. Let's see, there is stonewall gray, silver, and gunmetal. So let's go gunmetal. Okay. This is straight out of the bottle first. Uh, let's do his uh, inquisiting stick. Yeah, it looks like it's metal in the picture. All right, so far so good. It's got good, pretty good coverage. Yeah, I uh, painted some of the 40K objectives with the gunmetal from the Vallejo, and it was much better quality than the gunmetals out of the crap barrel stuff. <laughs> crap barrel. That is if its official new name. They're going to be really mad if they ever watch this. Maybe the crack barrel people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make better paints, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they're 50 cents. What do you expect? That's true. I do like that about them. And not all of it's bad. It's just, you know. Yeah. It's just, I'm finding it's better to use something, I guess, relatively purpose-built for the application. Mm-hmm. It is a lot easier. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, especially for somebody like me who is, you know, barely an amateur at this. I changed my mind. I want his boots to be metal. Yeah, definitely. It's just, it's just a lot easier. There's less, there's less thought and effort into it. Yeah. That just isn't. It's not like it's totally necessary. It's I don't think you get a much better product by going the pain in the ass route. You mean using like like getting all of like getting all the acrylics and all the mediums. I mean, you can. That's the thing. You can get some really cool effects that you can't get any other way. You're talking about like yeah, using the the art uh, the fine art acrylics with all the different mediums. Cuz different ones for different applications. But you can't you could get some really cool effects that way. It's just it's a lot more effort, it's a lot more money, it's a lot more time. And if you're not going if you're not going to try and be a professional mini painter, I don't know how much it's worth it. So let me ask you this question. Even if you're just going to be doing it amateur for your own games, would you say it's worth getting the Vallejos over the craft barrels? I do. Okay. I, I really do like the Vallejos better. So it's not worth going out and, you know, learning like the Liquitexes, the really expensive stuff, but it's worth getting Vallejos or, you know, some other line of decent mini. Yeah. Gotcha. And honestly, I'm using just the Vallejos and at the moment just out of the bottle because I want to see what happens. I want to do a comparison for people. But doing it on my own, just for my own figures, I there would probably be a mix of the two. Yeah. I really like the Vallejos. They got, they've got a good... A good game color set. How much was it? 
like 40 bucks. 40 bucks? How much is the set for Citadel? Uh, well, they offer a different number of paints. I think it's eight paints for 50 bucks, but don't quote me on that. Eight for 50. Yeah, they, they were expensive. Yeah, I remember so. looking going, ouch. Um, you know, I really do like the Citadel washes, though. Like, the color schemes are better. Um, we haven't gotten to it yet, but we, we will do the Vallejo black wash. Um, I can say I already know that it is thicker than the Citadel, which part of me likes. Um, you don't, unless you're going for like a heavy, deep shadowed area, you're probably going to want to thin it down a decent amount, and I will, but you get a lot more for, for your money, which is really nice. I totally forgot to paint his fire with the red earlier. One thing I would say to people is quite often people buy these Citadel paint sets because they are key to certain models in the Citadel line, or rather the Games Workshop line. Like yeah. you can buy the paint set for Blood Marines or whatever. However, there are people out there who have, like there, I have a spreadsheet that shows which colors correspond in each line. So if you're willing to put in a little work, and I think Army Painter, I think that's the brand also does it, but you can go get the specific colors that match up with the Citadels for cheaper. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Ain't that the way? It's either time or money. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I was rambling about. So yeah, I I. <laughs> With my own stuff, I would probably end up doing a mix of the cheaper acrylics and the Vallejos. I like the price for the amount that you get. And it's not like those evil shampoo bottles that specifically sp plop out more than you need just so you have to buy more. Jerks. But, um, because I the amount of colors you can get for 50 cents and the cheap ones is great. Like some of the nasty greens for like the swampy things and and zombie things. Oh, they're just great. They're great. They're disgusting in the best way possible. So, and cuz otherwise you're going to have to do a lot of mixing with the Vallejos to get certain colors. Like in this set there's no actual flesh tone. Well, one thing I should step in, the game color set has over like 80 colors in it. Yeah, you can buy a whole lot more. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to give that impression. I'm so sorry, Vallejo. <laughs> you have many colors to choose from. But, you know, I, I get it. If you don't want to spend like... How much is the big set? Uh, I don't know. I don't off remember. The top of my head. Nah. It just, you know, when you get individual colors that are pre-mixed for you, it does get expensive. So I will actually go over some mixing stuff, because I, I think that might, um, might yeah. actually be helpful. That would probably be a good next episode. Hey, actually. that's a good idea. There we go. How to mix stuff. Because I spend pretty much all of my time doing color. I paint, I study art, and I do framing. Everything I do is about analyzing color and mixing it and figuring out what's in it. So, and I like it. It's fun. And there's some some little tricks that not every that aren't obvious at first sight. So, try and make it a little easier. All right, he's starting to look pretty good so far. Still needs. Still a little ways to go, but progress is being made. All right, quickly, since there's no flesh tone in this set, we're gonna have to improvise. Of course, flesh tone's always kind of a subjective thing. There's there's all kinds, and you're gonna be going for a different kind of, for every figure you have. So. so Hold up. You should tell people exactly how much you're using of what. Yeah. All right. You can make this an absolute exact science. I'm not terribly good at doing that just for my own purposes. But what I'm going to do is use a drop of the bone white 
and then I'm gonna get some white on my brush and start mixing it in. Let's be a little mix and intro. Can you see the palette in there? There. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> so you kind of mix it in and until it makes you happy. I'm gonna pull a Bob Ross here. Happy little skin tones. Um, and then you can go in and get a little bit of red or a little bit of even actually this leather brown is yellow ochre it's they named it something different but it's it's coming out very much yellow ochre just in case you need to know that um so i might end up calling it the wrong thing later <clears throat> so that's looking pretty good you just hold the palette up just a little bit it's kind of overexposed yeah it is it's hard to see yeah. That and it's all, it's lights on white. Yeah. But let's try it out on his head. For some reason I just really want the Avison Inquisitors to be very pale. <clears throat> like they spend all their time in a monastery or a tower somewhere. Yeah, that's, I think that's actually looking pretty good. Probably going to need another coat. Which I should do quickly because there's not much of this at the moment. Yeah, start start off with the base color, the with a base color, and then you can just very slowly by tiny increments add what you want to to get where you want. Because it's a lot easier to add little bits, just like the water. It's easier to add than it is to subtract with paint. All right, he's got a head. Ooh, and now I'm excited. Let's go straight to orange. Orange fire. Gotten into this yet. You always want to shake the bottles because it'll get any pigment that's settled off at the bottom redistributed. I love it. See, tiny little dot from that bottle. God, I love that. If you've done much of this, you know what I mean. You can almost just use like a dry brush technique, especially with the fire because it's it's always moving. It sucks. I don't know if you how well you can see it on the card. <laughs> There's no good angle for this, at least not without moving the camera. But the one I'm painting in particular is way in the back, so. I'm having to make a little bit of this up as I go along. So we got base colors in. He's starting to look like a thing. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see. Last thing we need to do with the red is do a little detail on his mask and then I think we can go ahead and do a wash. And I like doing the wash and then going back in and doing a couple highlights. I got too much red. Oh dear. So do the surround of his mask in a uh, metal. Leave that center part in red. The casting on this mini yeah, is actually, not great. So these, uh, I mean, they're extremely cheap. Like, you can get 10 minis for 6 bucks on Amazon now, basically. I noticed a casting error in his case. Yeah, yeah. right I there. I doubt it'll show up on stream, but... Uh, it probably will when I do the wash. Yeah, I imagine it will. <clears throat> but uh, we're going to make that look like it was meant to be there. Yeah tear from some sort of horrible fight with zombie creatures. I 
All right, that's totally not the exact symbol, but that is what is there, and I don't think I'm going to have much luck changing it. All right, let's all right, let's see what the wash does. We'll start at the bottom and give the <clears throat> top a little bit of more time to dry. All right, luckily I already know that this is too thick for most places, but just so you can see how how it's actually working out. This is straight from the bottle. And I know I want the underneath his coat down in here to be darker than the rest. So I don't mind doing this. See how thick that is? That's really dark. And if you're going for that, awesome. If not, you're going to be ticked off. But it does do a really good job of getting into the crevices. I, I think I like this as much as I like the Citadel. <clears throat> Alright, so let's... Let's go ahead and thin some. When you're starting over with a new coat, especially that you want to be thinner, make sure you clean your brush out. It likes to hide. Let's try out a shoulder. It's still a little bit thick. Might want to thin it a little more. do a really good job of bringing out the details. The only th thing I don't like, the, we're, the black is the only wash we got from them for the moment. So the other ones, so where I want to not be just black and white. I'm going to have to do a little bit of mixing with other stuff. We have Citadel washes too, right? Oh yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. Trying to be good and just stick with the Vallejos. I feel you. I wouldn't normally care, but for this, if you're going to order one set and it's going to be Vallejo, at least you'll know what it is you're getting. Yeah, you can see that defect. That's awful. Oh, yeah, it comes up clear. We'll make it look purposeful, but... Yeah, at least it's cheap. Still, doing a quick wash in black is... Depending on what you're going for, certain, certain things it would be bad, but... It's kind of nice because at least you can you can see the detail better to work with it. Some of these are very subtle. Going back to your DIY washes, do you really think that it's worth spending the money? I mean, you're not going to save a hell of a lot. You know, even if you're like if you're using less wash, do you think it's worth it for beginners just to go and purchase the pre-made washes? I do. Yeah. The <clears throat> my first inclination is always, well, I can make that, and I don't want to spend the money on it. But I admit, it got those washes were pain in the ass, and and it probably. I think a lot of that was because we did so many of them yeah. to to try and find a good mix. And once you find it, it is easier to, to recreate that. But, you know, there's like that guy that creates like the huge bottles where he's got the base and he, you know, he does a whole big batch of it, which would make it a lot easier. But it, it genuinely is more, it's more of a pain in the ass and more running around from store to store, or you can order it on Amazon, but it, the ex, the upfront expense is probably gonna be more than just ordering the wash. Well, the way I kind of felt about it was, if you're at the point that you're making 
big bottles of wash mix, you probably don't need people's opinions. Like, you probably know enough of your own shit at that point that mm-hmm. you can determine what's best for you. I mean, that's Les Bursley that made the one we're looking at, and he is, I think he's won a couple of, what is it called, Golden Demons or whatever. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it looked great. Oh, yeah, no, it was a nice wash. It's just a pain in the ass. yeah. I really thought I was going to like making them more than just buying them, too. I That surprised me. Yeah. But then, again, like, you know, I do, I do so much serious painting. Well, serious. Um, as serious as monsters get. But the mini paintings is a little more of a relaxing thing to me. And so I... Being able to just have most of it on hand without a a ton of extra effort and prep work is really nice. You know, I'm, I'm definitely willing to go through the pain in the ass to get the better effect, to make it look better. Because I'm picky. But... I mean, these really do work well. Yeah, one thing I want to stress, at least at this point in our mini painting, for lack of a better term, journey, career, <laughs> whatever the fuck you want to call it. Our quest? Yeah. What uh, is your quest? Exactly. Uh, I would say that we are much more focused on the process and the methods that we as amateurs are using and if you want pro advice by all means go check out pros rachel is a professional artist but she's not a professional mini painter so we're kind of learning as we go along and and that's why we focus more so on the amateur what's going to be good for people who aren't doing this for a job or doing this for a serious serious hobby you're learning with us. It's like fucking reading Yay. Rainbow. Take a look. It's in a book. Actually, no, it's on YouTube. All right, I'm thinking the white cape is a little bit bright for my taste. I want to keep it white because that's the that's the color of the figures, and I like it on the board when it's nice and not confusing. Just make it very clear who you're looking at at any given point. Because we have a little too much fun with terrain. Yeah, I should say, uh, for people who have watched our channel and dig the AOTP stuff, I mean, it's what we started with. When we get all these squads painted, I'd say we're about halfway through. Uh, We are going to have a giant-ass battle where we probably both are controlling, like, three Mm. planeswalkers apiece. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to kick your ass. Probably. I don't know. You did in the last one. I'm still salty about that shit. Oh, that's so sad. (laughs) Okay, so I mixed some of the leather brown, the white, and the, um, the bone white. And thinned it down a lot with water. You still get a little bit of that, uh, bubbly congealing thing going on but it's not bad and since you're just kind of trying to dirty it up and give it a little bit of texture and a little more depth that's absolutely fine you can just move it around with your brush to where you want it and it'll be fine but that i think looks a lot better bring it up a little bit oop sorry It's a nice, it's a really good consistency. And like with the Citadel, every sometimes I want it to be thicker and it's not. So you have to like try and add in some black from other things. But with the Vallejo, you it, it starts off it pretty much as dark as I'm ever going to want it. But then you can thin it down to whatever, whatever lightness you want, which is nice.
and take a let's take a look at how they're looking next to each other. So this is this is the one we did with the cheap acrylics. So far with Vallejos. Turn it both around. The Inquisitor hokey pokey. <laughs> So it's kind of looking like the end results may not be incredibly different, but the ease, uh, the ease of painting them is much different. The ability to get the results you want. Yeah. With the Vallejos. Because I, mm -hmm. I wonder, like for me, you know, being much less experienced at this than you are, I find that when I'm using the craft barrel paints, they're way too thick. If I thin them enough, then they just flow <clears throat> horribly. They end up getting in spots I don't want them to. Mm -hmm. With the Vallejos, I feel like I have much more control. Or, you know, I've used Citadels, or even with, like, testers, I've found I have a little more control over where the paint's going to go. And when you're painting on such a small scale, that's incredibly important. Yeah, control is a huge part of this. Yeah. And I do feel like, I do think you're right, the Vallejos have, seem to have a better control. I wonder if if I painted a model with the crap paints and then painted another in the same squad, you know, a similar model with the good paints, I think the end result would show more of the difference. I think your ability overrides some of the cheap paint problems we should you, try it yeah i will let me go and do so with the minis with the highlights i'm going to go ahead and go do the highlights on the cape since there isn't a ton more i want to do to it but i want it dirty but that's a little too dirty i want a little more depth and a lot of times people think that just means continually making it darker but you want to go over the high points with a white is this a dry brush technique you're doing? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it is. So, the tops of the creases. You want to think about where... Let's see. Let me scooch this to a, a better spot. So, you want to think about where the light is going to be hitting it. And there's people that will even go so far as to try and create that in their base coats to give more of that effect. Um, you can if you want to. They'll, they'll do like a darker base coat and then do a lighter base coat from angles that the light would be hitting it. But you can not go through all of that and, and paint that in instead. You always want more than one way to skin a cat. Or paint an inquisitor. So you want to, but you want to think about how they're sitting and how they would be sitting naturally. And the sun is going to come hit them from somewhere above. So the tops of things are going to matter. You want to get the tops of the creases and folds, the top of his head. The top of his glove is going to show up a lot more than the bottom. And of course there's going to be variation in that. And there's going to be shadows cast by other things. With the minis, I don't go too entirely crazy with the light source. Because when you're moving them around the board, that would be changing in a natural environment anyway. So, but light is gen is generally always going to be somewhere overhead if it's an outdoor thing. So you're pretty safe with that. And since you do so much flipping these around when you're painting them, it's, it's actually a good beneficial thing to set it down every once in a while and consider where things are coming from. 
Because it, it's actually kind of easy to lose perspective moving them around so much to get into the detailed areas. Yeah, see, see how that's starting to look? You can get a little more three-dimensionality than, than is even there in the three-dimensional form. Like with these little bitty ones, you want to just absolutely barely touch it with your brush. Because it's not going to take a lot. He lost my little holder from the last one, and I liked that thing. I'm gonna have to make another one. Guess I need more wine, too. Oh, you mean because it was a cork you were using? Uh huh. Oh, no. The, nice, the other nice thing about doing the gray undercoat. Is this one and there's different shades of gray haha <laughs> more than 50 oddly enough but it this one and they do tend to lean a little more blue which is nice because and I'll talk about this more when we do the color mixing but different different temperatures are gonna have different effects like the cooler colors are going to recede and the warmer colors are gonna pop forward so having a blue gray base coat means that that blue-gray is going to recede naturally to your eye. So if when you get into these little crevices, having that blue undertone means they fall back, giving it the illusion of more depth than it genuinely has. Let's see. What else do we need to do to this guy? I think I do want to go over his mask and look under his neck a little more. I am curious to see what the other Vallejo washes are like. Since I like the black, stains to reason I would like some of the other ones. All right, and I promise next time I'll pick one that's a little more colorful. These just made, they were so similar that doing a comparison with them was really easy. All right, let's... I think he needs a little bling now. Do some gold. I approve of the gunmetal. Let's see about gold. Yeah, Walter, mm -hmm. I uh, I tried doing a couple of the original set without priming them, and it did not work well. These are not the highest quality minis out there. We primed them with some basic Krylon spray paint where we just took the entire set outside and went over it. And it seems to be working pretty well. Ooh, the, the metallics are really good for uh, giving some highlights too because they'll catch the light really well. Under the brown's good. And yes, I did hear that. The the priming is important. It gives the paint something better to stick to so that it doesn't it doesn't it won't slide around on the mini so much when while you're painting while it's wet and it also is less likely to scratch off or peel off later. He's right, these do need help. Yeah, one other thing. Most people know this, so I'm probably preaching to the choir, but uh, minis, when, especially the plastic ones, they have a casting agent that they use to separate them from the mold that stays on the plastic when they ship them to you. So giving them a good scrub with some dish soap and hot water and use a toothbrush will get all that casting agent crap out of there, and the paint adheres way better. 
Make sure you don't use your own toothbrush. Use <laughs> one you bought for it or your siblings or spouses if you're mad at them that day. Ooh, I like this gold a lot. I actually haven't used the gold yet. That's nice. Gold is a nice highlight to the brown. I like how that's turning out. I'll do another close-up shot in just a second. Because doing a white highlight... Doing a, a pure white highlight on some things just doesn't, it doesn't have the, as good of an effect as, as another lighter color would do. The metallics I really like for that purpose. They catch the light well and aren't as obvious. They're a little more subtle than the white would be. So a silver is a good choice instead of a pure white if you need it. All right, what do you guys think? What Do I need to do anything else in particular? Maybe a little... I had done a wash over his little cravat, so maybe a little bit of a bright red highlight. Go back over with the pure color. That looks a little better. Let's see a uh, comparison shot. Alright. Oh, right. So, cheap paint is on the left, and expensive paint is on the right. Looks good. It was a lot easier to get the smaller details with the Vallejo. By a lot. So why don't you give us your final opinions? Honestly, if this set costs forty dollars and the amount of the ridiculous amount of the craft paint that I now own, I probably spent half as much on the craft paint. But the experience using the Vallejos for this in particular was so much better. I I have to admit I think it's worth it. It's just, it saves you such a pain in the ass, so much time, so much effort, so much frustration that I really, I, I, I'm happy we bought them. I really Especially, am. I think the effect would be multiplied for beginners as well. Yeah. I, I, now, I have not bothered to go and buy the Citadel, but... I know they're more expensive than the Vallejos, and they're much more specific, and so that they're all they all come pre mixed, which I think is too far in the other direction personally. Um, but I say that coming from a point of view where I do a lot of mixing and I like mixing colors, so I think maybe making that a little easier and more accessible for other people would help too. So you don't have to spend top dollar for the paint, but the bottom of the crap barrel is is a little tragic, and I'd go middle of the road. I, I think it's worth it. So getting something that's purpose-built for painting minis is something you advise? Yeah, I do. It really does make it a lot easier to do and work with and makes it a better experience. Beautiful. Why don't you give us one more comparison shot? Okay. Again, the cheap paint is on the left, Oops. and the expensive paint is on the right. Yeah. All right, I think we can wrap it up. Awesome. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a great night.